So it's my pleasure today to welcome you to our Wednesday webinar, Recess Before Lunch, Recipe for Success. And I'd like to acknowledge OPI School Nutrition Programs for supporting this webinar platform. Um, funding for this project that we'll be sharing with you um, came from the Montana School Health Program is a program of the Montana Department Public of Department Public Health and Human Services, and they provided the funding which helped us update our recess before lunch guide. Um, so just a little housekeeping items. Participants today are on mute, so to communicate with us, please do use the chat box located on the left-hand side of your screen. Um, that's also a place where you will type in or ask questions. We will answer questions at the end of the session. So the plan is for us to share information from about 2 to 2.30, and then we will answer any questions that have come in through the chat box. Um, we also use the chat box to sign in so that we know who's participating. So if you are from Montana, please type into the chat box your name and school name. If you are from another state, please type in your name and the state which you are from. And then for those of you keeping track of your hours for professional standards, in the file share box located on the lower left hand corner of your screen, you, here is where you will find a certificate of participation that you can download um, as proof that you did attend today's event. So that is in the file share box. All right, without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our guest speaker today is Dale Hayes. And she is a nationally known school wellness champion. Um, while she's nationally known, she's also a, has Montana roots. She's lived in Montana for many years and has raised her family here. She is a supporter of healthy meals and healthy school environments. She's the founder of School Meals That Rock. And if you don't follow her on Facebook or Twitter, please do. Her contact information is listed here. Um, we have had the pleasure to work with many years for Dale Hayes on a variety of topics. And the most recent one was updating this Recess Before Lunch guide. So um, Dale, is a, she's an awesome professional. She's a school meals champion. And we're lucky to call her friends here in Montana. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Dale Hayes. She's joining us from Florida today. Are you with us, Dale? I am with you, Molly, and thank you for the lovely introduction. Of course, I would always rather be in Montana, and certainly my heart is always in Montana. Okay, Dale, um, I'm not hearing you. You're not hearing me. Just a second. Right, can you hear us, Dale? It says that my microphone is on. OK. Gosh, I wonder why I can't hear Dale. Dale, just prompt me in the chat box when you want me to pull in the poll questions. I will do that, because it says that Deb and Katie and Cindy can hear me. So I'm just going to go ahead. All right. Um, I, uh, as I was starting to say, I am in Florida today, and I'm actually in Gainesville, Florida, which is Katie Bark's alma mater. So go Gators for Katie Bark. Um, it has actually been a wonderful day in Florida. Everybody keeps telling me how cold it is here because, I don't know, it's 55 or 60, and I, of course, am wearing open-toed shoes. Um, but uh, I started out my day doing the thing that I would uh, rather do almost more than anything else in the world, and that is visit schools. So I saw a school breakfast. I participated in a school garden activity with kindergartners, 
and uh, then I had a delicious school lunch. So it is perfectly appropriate, I think, to now move on to um, my second favorite topic in schools, that would be after school meals, um, is recess before lunch. I had worked on the original guide with uh, Molly and Katie and some of the original research that went into Montana's work in recess before lunch. Um, when they said we're going to update this and uh, provide a new guide, I was thrilled. Um, and the subtitle for uh, this update is Optimizing School Schedules to Support Learning. One of the things I learned as we started in on this activity is that uh, all over the country, people know Montana's work and Montana team nutrition work in terms of supporting recess before lunch. This guide, or our previous guide, really is the go-to resource. So Molly, uh, we want to uh, put in a poll um, and it looks like maybe Molly can hear me now. So we're going to do our first poll um, just to get an idea of whether you uh, have recess before lunch currently in your district. So there are three choices. One is that uh, you have no recess before lunch. Yes, in some schools or some grade levels and then yes in all grade levels. So it looks like we have about six votes. Um, seven, ooh, we're still getting a few more votes coming in. So that's great. Um, Molly, have you broadcast the results so everybody can see them? Yes, I have. Excellent. So it looks like we have a number of people who have no recess before lunch in the district, some who have some recess before lunch, and then just uh, one person with uh, yes in all schools and grade levels. So that's great to know who's on the webinar and uh, what you're doing in your schools. And if Molly can get rid of the poll, then I can go ahead with the next slide. One of the things that we want you to know for sure is this is going to be a pretty brief um, overview of the guide and of the whole issue, but everything that we're going to be talking about, um, that includes the guide, the benefits, some school schedules, and the checklist are all online. In fact, all of the um, resources that came out of this project are all at the website listed on the bottom. So uh, on the Team Nutrition website in Smart Pleasant Meals. And the other thing is, is that Molly and I were just talking before this webinar and I said I would put together a short set of slides um, to again post on the website and then you can use those to talk about recess before lunch in your district. So we're going to talk about why recess before lunch, then we're going to talk about how recess before lunch, and wrap up with who. And again, we're uh, planning on this going for about 20 more minutes, and then to opening it up for questions um, and or discussion. I was attending a workshop in uh, Tennessee, and this was uh, put up on the screen by one of the speakers. And I thought, that really is such a wonderful way to think about making decisions in schools, that they should be based on the needs and interests of the students, not the habits and the traditions of adults. And so often when we talk about recess before lunch and recess before lunch issues, to me it comes down to, Often, that's the way we've always done it, or it's more convenient for adults in some way. If we really start to think about the whole idea of how do we schedule time for recess and time for lunch, it really does make sense for it to be um, uh, the order of recess first and then lunch. Because fundamentally, recess improves the quality of uh, children's nutrition. And we know that school meals improve learning environments. However, if the children do not take the meal in, in other words, if they're too busy, if they're rushing to get outside, they don't have enough time to eat, 
all of those kinds of things means that they don't actually consume the lunch. Really, we've just put an apple on the top of the kid's head. We all know and we all say an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but only if it is consumed. So school meals, uh, both breakfast and lunch, have been designed to fill the nutrition gaps that children have and also to provide the nutrients that they need in order to um, think, focus, concentrate, and learn. So the, the school meals have been designed, the meal patterns support both uh, feeding children's bodies and fueling their minds, but again, it has to get into the child. This is actually one of my favorite recent pictures of school lunch. I was in uh, Manhattan, Montana, and this very adorable uh, second grader was uh, eating like a beast. Um, and you can see what they were offering. It was uh, Taco Tuesday. I was very happy to have gone there for lunch. Um, but it's only nutrition. All that wonderful food on the little beast's uh, tray is only nutrition when he eats or drinks it. If it just, if he doesn't have enough time to eat or he's rushing and it goes into the trash, it is just garbage. Um, our goal overall is to get more food into children and less food into trash cans. And so much of the meals, so many of the meals, in fact, most of the meals I've been seeing recently across the country, but especially in Montana, are so delicious that students really do want to eat them, but they need the time to do that and the kind of schedule that promotes consuming the food. This, by the way, was obviously a very loved lunch at uh, Montfortin School just outside of uh, Bozeman. And I didn't fake this picture at all. The students who took the trays really had eaten the food that way. So how does recess impact children and impact their meals? Well, it does two things. I think one of the things that, well, it does many things, actually. But one of the things that it does is it allows children to get their wiggles out, to burn off some of the energy um, that accumulates uh, or the stress that accumulates as they um, sit in school. So they, if they're able to go out and have recess and run around, they burn off some of that extra energy. So when they come back to the cafeteria, Again, they can focus on their food um, and eat it. But the other thing it does, I think, is just uh, it, in having recess before lunch is just a more comfortable uh, way to eat because I don't think any adult would like to eat a big meal and then go out on a run or rush to the gym. So really, recess before lunch, again, thinks about the needs um, of children and what works best for them in terms of what adults worry about. Um, I hope you all have recess in your school. I hope you have as much recess as possible because I think one of the things that has happened is that we have uh, limited the time that children have for recess. Uh, I found this on the internet and I think it particularly um, shows what happens especially to children who have any kind of attention deficits. Um, you're telling me I got to sit in this chair all day and don't get recess? excuse me while I misbehave in class. So in addition to the effect it can have on nutrition and on lunch, recess itself has lots of benefits. And I think one of the really good things is that schools are trying to and beginning to recognize that recess has lots of benefit. It provides time for children to rest, to play, think, move, and to socialize. Honestly, we give children very little time to socialize in school. And that is often, um, especially in rural schools, when they get to connect with their friends. Also, lots of evidence that there's increased productivity and attentiveness after a recess break. So one of the things about recess before lunch, it allows children to have burnt off that extra energy and to pay attention to their lunch. Also, uh, recess can uh, help children learn some communication skills, how to negotiate things, solve problems, and also social coping skills. So it is, it, recess is important in and of itself. 
school lunch is important in and of itself. So I think it really behooves us to think about how do we schedule those things so that children can get maximum benefit out of the recess and out of the lunch. This is just the table of contents for uh, the new updated guide. And really, this is a very simple guide. I think it has about 28 pages totally. And that was really purposeful to try to um, keep a uh, focused, simple approach to the issue of recess before lunch. We have sprinkled some quotes in between. And then we have some fun graphics. And by the way, those graphics are also available uh, up on the website. We start with, in the guide, talking about recess and lunch and how they fit into the whole context, the, the context of the whole child and the community. So um, recess before lunch obviously is not the only thing that needs to go on in a school schedule in order for children to um, have maximum uh, benefit for learning. But this is the whole child model. And this really recognizes um, the importance of recess before lunch for a number of factors. And uh, for CDC and USDA, one of those most important ones happened to be uh, reducing food waste. Many of the benefits of recess before lunch are um, summarized in this sheet. And again, this is in the guide, but it's also a separate PDF. So if you were hoping to um, talk to folks in your schools about or school district about uh, um, having recess before lunch, increasing um, the uh, uh, opportunities for all classes to have recess before lunch, this a uh, handout would be um, something great to copy and share with them. So it talks about um, that uh, uh, Montana uh, principals uh, support recess before lunch. It talks about the benefits that they see, um, including that lunch consumption and then decreased food waste. And then there's a section that really focuses on the greater nutrient consumption. And not only do children overall eat overall better when they've had recess first, but they also consume more of the entree and fruits and vegetables. In other words, that if a child is in a rush to get out to recess, they may concentrate on some uh, quick carbohydrates, the bread, the things that are easier to eat. Whereas if they've had recess first, they come in, they're hungry, um, and they sit down and consume more of those important fruits, vegetables, and then of their entree. It's worth noting that milk and fluid consumption also increases that uh, after when children have recess before their lunch. And some of this I really consider to be sort of duh research. I mean, if children go out and move more, um, they're going to be hungrier and they're going to be thirstier. The time that we give children to eat really does matter. The recommendation is for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, the school that I had lunch in today in Florida was just wonderful. All the children have a 30-minute lunch period. And um, one of the ladies who uh, worked in this school, um, when I said, how much time do they have to eat, she said, 30 minutes. Isn't that the law? I said, unfortunately, it's not the law. And sometimes children are really uh, pushed um, to uh, eat faster than they want to. Um, and that I see as a real problem for getting the benefits of lunch. The whole question about food waste has become much something that people in the US are much more concerned about. Um, you may have heard that. Um, uh, up to uh, you know 30 to 40 percent of food is wasted between when it's grown, when it's produced, and when it gets into people. Um, what's important is that we are wasting a lot of food and that people in our country are going hungry. So anything we can do that reduces plate waste um, and again gets that food into children to do its benefit. Um, this also will be available as a separate sheet for you to use to talk about 
Um, the importance of uh, scheduling recess before lunch reduces plate waste by up to 30%, extending the time that children have to eat from at least 20 to 30 minutes. And by the way, that's talking about seat time, not the time that they uh, spend in line. And that there are many other strategies that many of you have worked on for smarter lunchrooms that can also increase the um, uh, reduce the amount of plate waste, and most importantly, get more of that food into children. So for the next 10 minutes, or maybe a little less, I want to then focus on how. So we know the why, we need to think about the how. And really, the scheduling of recess before lunch is not all that complicated. Um, people think it sort of turns the world upside down, but really it's just flipping time frames. And I know that um, issues like hand washing or what do you do with your coats or those kinds of things can become a big deal. But the fact of the matter is where there's a will, there is a way in order to um, to implement recess before lunch. And in fact, most of the people I talk to, especially the Montana schools and principals who have recess before lunch, are just matter of fact about it. That's just how we do it, and that works. Um, again, we utilized some materials from other states in addition to our previous guide. This one happens to be from the uh, Hawaii guide. Um, but we took some of their comments and their ideas to put into this updated guide. I think one of the most important pieces and one of the most useful pieces for you who are trying to um, implement or maybe expand recess before lunch in the schools is to use this very simple checklist. Again, we didn't make things complicated. Um, we just wanted to give people the time to um, go through, evaluate what's going on in their schools, and, and really think about what sort of support do you have, um, what are current issues with the schedules. But again, just begin to think about it. And I, if I were starting from the beginning in a school, um, I would start with um, a meeting of people who are interested, talk to them about the benefits, and then use this checklist to go through and sort of see where you are now and then where you could go. Um, we tried to, again, put together um, some strategies for people to think about scheduling in general. And these were the basic four categories that the people who we talk to, the people who have successful recess before lunch, really concentrated on to planning your schedule carefully, and to allow adequate time for recess, lunch, and transitions. And I learned a lot in putting this guide together about the issue of transitions. So if you notice on the top of the right hand of this slide, we talk about positive transitions. Transitions are just when children are moving from doing one thing to doing the other. So when you're moving children from recess outside, um, they have to transition into the lunchroom or into a place to wash their hands. And how you help them transition can make all the difference in the world uh, for the scheduling. I happen to believe that whether it's transitions or whether it's hand washing, whatever it is, children can be taught to do anything. They can be taught any process as long as it is carefully explained to them and as long as the adults help reinforce that. I saw a wonderful example of that this morning um, in the uh, school I visited in uh, here in Florida. And uh, they had a limited number of tricycles. And these were kindergartners. But they had an entire process for how long they could ride the uh, tricycle, uh, uh, the little path. All the arrows went in one way. And then they took it back to the place where the other children were lined up. And the next child got to get on the tricycle. So no matter what it is, what we need to do as adults is figure out a schedule that works for our students to then teach them that schedule and then to reinforce that schedule over and over again until it becomes just the way we do business. And I saw something actually in several of the Florida schools I've been in, which 
I've never seen in a Montana school, um, but they were uh, student aides who uh, had little um, crossing guard sort of uh, yellow. Um, it wasn't exactly a vest. It was more just a webbing on. And uh, they helped in, in both, in all cases. They'd been fifth graders in elementary schools. Um, but they helped with uh, moving students from uh, one place to another safely. They were helping in the lunchroom to encourage children to eat their breakfast and move back to class. So I think having student helpers could really benefit in something like these schedules. And again, these are just sample schedules for various age groups um, that you can utilize. The other thing that we have included are links to this very useful uh, resource about recess. Um, it was just developed last year by CDC and Shape America, that's the Association for PE Teachers. But I just thought this was a remarkable resource, and it really helped schools walk through the questions of uh, what needs to happen in order to make recess successful. It isn't just opening the doors and letting children run screaming outside, um, but um, uh, you know, how to make sure all students are included, how to um, provide a variety of games for students uh, to play, and then uh, over on the right-hand side there to make sure that uh, recess is never withheld as a punishment. Uh, I would hope that no schools in Montana are doing that. But that's something really important to think about in terms of a wellness policy. And this guide from CDC, which is available online, there are links to it in our guide, really helps think through all of the issues involved in recess. Sprinkled throughout the guide, and in this section in particular, we uh, got uh, our local Montana principals and school nutrition professionals and other people to give their best tips or their uh, best advice. Um, and one of the ones I liked the best uh, was from a principal in uh, Bozeman who is currently at Irving who said, expect schedules to be a work in progress. Um, and I think he really emphasized how important it is to have ongoing discussions. You don't recess before lunch is not something just for a principal to say we're going to do this and and there's no questions about it, but to have that ongoing discussion. And then the last bullet point talks about recess before lunch can be um, implemented in a variety of ways. There isn't one size fits all. Again, our tagline for this guide is optimizing school schedules to support learning. So we are trying to support learning by having a recess um, which gives students a break, gives their brains uh, some activity, which we know helps, but also then um, gets them ready to go into a cafeteria or uh, dining area and to really get the benefits of the wonderful school lunches that you have all prepared. So who's going to do this or who should be doing this? Well, uh, Laban, who I met at Irving School when I was working on this guide, um, is looking at you because it is you. It is uh, you who are on this call. Uh, it is you who are parents who are interested in thinking about how can a schedule work best for students. You notice that Laban's tray is completely empty except for some fruit. Um, as students at Irving were allowed to go back for extra fruit once they had finished everything on their plate. Laban had had recess. He had come in. He had had a wonderful lunch. And then he was still hungry and probably a little thirsty. So he went back to get his extra fruit. This, to me, was just a perfect example of scheduling to optimize the benefits for learning so that Laban can go back uh, to his classroom and learn. Um, you know, since recess before lunch isn't always the norm, since it isn't something that everybody knows this is just how we do business, 
um, a lot of education is required. And again, in very simple ways, we try to outline the strategies that would really help in gaining the support. And I think it's having the conversations with staff and parents, and even with students themselves or with the community in general, to talk about why are we doing recess this way? Why are we, first of all, emphasizing the importance of movement for students, but why do we see this as being so important to take place um, before lunch? And truly, again, when people realize the benefits and the rationale for doing it, where there's a will, there's a way. So I just want to remind you that all the things that I have talked about today are available on the Team Nutrition website under Smart Pleasant Meals uh, RBL for Recess Before Lunch. Um, the guide is there, uh, the handout with the benefits, the sample schedules. Um, and then the checklist. So those are included within the whole overall guide that you can download, but the other items are available separately so that you can download, print them, and uh, share them with folks. So I managed to stick to my time very well. Oh, I did not go to the second poll. Um, Molly was kind enough not to interrupt me. Um, maybe we'll offer the uh, a poll right now, Molly, and then we'll open it up for questions. How does that sound? She's bringing it out there, I can see. So uh, in thinking about recess before lunch at your school, what do you see as the biggest barrier to implementing a different schedule like this? Uh, we hear hand washing sometimes, uh, block scheduling. Uh, many folks have seen as causing a, making it more difficult to um, uh, implement recess before lunch. Or as I see um, uh, creeping up here in our poll, um, managing the transitions is uh, noted there. Um, but in fact, you're all confirming uh, my view of the situation, uh, which is really just that people don't like change very much. I once heard the uh, comment that the only people who like change are babies with wet diapers. Um, so it isn't that there's really any reason or any rationale for having recess after lunch. It's just the way we've, uh, we've always done it. And quite frankly, I do not see that as a good reason um, to uh, do something is just because we've always done it that way. Um, if considered carefully, they don't take too many, it doesn't take um, any more time or any more staff. It's just thinking through the process and making it worth, uh, work for students. So Molly, um, you may have some questions or uh, if you uh, don't see any there, we certainly have time to answer a few now. Um, so um, uh, type those into the box and we can talk about them. Uh, we did have one comment that came through as one of the biggest barriers is too many students at one time trying to get all students through at once. Um, that certainly is an issue, and in fact, one of the things that we know um, causes the, the biggest um, problem for students is having to wait in line. So that whole issue of trying to get too many students through um, a, a line in a cafeteria can certainly be a problem. I don't know, it might be a problem sometimes to have too many students out on a playground. Um, but when I go to schools and I see schools that are really functioning well, and that is well for the needs of the students, not the needs of the adults, but for the um, needs of the students is they really have thought through the flow of people um, and uh, food, uh, trays, whatever it is. I mean, I was in an elementary school today here in Florida that um, serves 500 lunches, 500 school lunches. 
um, out of about 600 kids. And they just had a sort of continuous flow of maybe five or six minutes in between a class. But the classes just came through. The students moved through the line um, rapidly. Again, admittedly, I was watching fourth and fifth graders. Um, but they, they knew how to do it. They knew what to do. And uh, they were hungry. They had been out to recess. And so they were moving through the line. Um, and if things aren't working, if there seems to be too many students or people are waiting too long in line, I think that's a time to brainstorm and problem solve. Um, a couple of the uh, people who I interviewed for this, the, um, uh, the uh, uh, vice principal uh, in Lockwood School said that when they've encountered some difficulty in their scheduling or how they implement recess, that really what they've down, done there is sit down as a staff and say, we're committed to this because um, we know that it's the best thing for students to have recess and then to have lunch. So I think sitting down and having a conversation, brainstorming, is a great way to start. Also, I'm really in favor of making recess before lunch part of a school wellness policy. Because sometimes I know that an administrator, a, a, a principal, superintendent has come in. They've been in favor. Everybody does recess before lunch. Then that person leaves. And no longer do people want to do recess before lunch. Whereas if it's in the wellness policy, then it's something that sticks. So um, next slide. Oh, I can advance my own slide. Thank you, Molly. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to uh, let people know that um, if you uh, want to, of course, you could uh, email me on Facebook um, and Twitter. Uh, you see my handles there, School Meals That Rock, and I do um, talk about issues like recess before lunch there. Um, but who you really need to be in touch with are the folks at Team Nutrition uh, in Montana. Uh, Molly Stenberg, who did a great job of facilitating this, as well as Katie Bark. Um, there you go to folks. They have um, worked on this issue for a long time. They're very knowledgeable, can provide um, training, technical assistance, and you know, sometimes if it's difficult to get the conversation going in your school, um, maybe having somebody else come in to uh, help lead that can help you. But we tried to design the guide as a do-it-yourself way to take a look at those important issues. So thank you, Molly and Katie, for inviting me long ago to be part of uh, Recess Before Lunch in Montana, and I'm really proud um, that we've taken a leadership in this role in our state. Thank you for your time today, Dale. This was excellent. Now we had one more question that came through, and is that if you were considering recess before lunch, would you recommend that a school do a trial period? Actually, I do like that idea. Sometimes people are more willing to try something. Um, if they know that it's not going to last forever. But don't make it too short of a trial period. Like one week, not long enough. I think you need to make a commitment to it um, for several weeks, maybe a month. Um, let both the students and the staff adjust to that change. And make sure you keep good communication. So try it. Uh, you know, say we're going to do this for a month. After a week or two weeks, have a discussion about it. Again, the principal at Irving in, Bo in Bozeman, who was so helpful to me, says that when uh, they regularly take a look at recess before lunch, at their overall scheduling, and they make tweaks and adapt it. So. I think that a, uh, a pilot period uh, of trying it is, is an excellent way to go. In bigger schools, not many Montana schools, maybe this big, but in bigger schools, I know that the way some people have done it is that they have piloted it with a couple of grades. And if that's worked really well, then they have um, uh, added other grades onto it. The thing to remember in all of this, the thing that I'd like to underscore is that recess before lunch is to benefit students 
and their learning. It is the best possible scheduling for them to have their physical activity and then to use the natural increases in uh, hunger and thirst that come from that activity as well as the natural ability to um, focus better once they've had some physical activity. It is really to their benefit um, that we need to think about recess before lunch. Of course, what most people report, not every teacher says this, but um, the vast majority say that students also are calmer when they return to the classroom if they're coming from the cafeteria and they're ready to learn. They're ready to learn because they have uh, had some time to calm down, but also because they have the fuel they need. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day. And uh, I hope to connect with some of you and visit some of your schools and in my trips across Montana as well as the country. Dale, thank you so much. We um, were fortunate to have you as our guest speaker today. And it's an opportunity to learn from a really positive expert. So thank you. I also My want to, pleasure. Hmm? I'd also like to tell you that I just put the recess before lunch guide in the file share box if anybody wants to download a complete copy of the guide. But as Dale mentioned, it's easily accessible via the website, either the entire guide or you can pick out pieces and parts that you know you'd like to use. Okay, is there, if there's no other questions, I think we'll sign off. And everyone have a great afternoon. Thank you.